Hey, Tim, look, a swathe of economic data, if you like. It all seems to be pointing in one direction, rate cut tomorrow. It does at the moment. We saw the market pull back briefly uh, on the announcement of all that data that came out at 11.30, but the market's just now continued to trend upwards. And I think we realise that it now looks even more certain that the Reserve Bank will be looking to cut interest rates tomorrow. Um, and if we have a look, we've also got further data coming out tomorrow, building approvals as well as uh, export sort of data before the decision. And I think all of this data is just going to continue to point towards further easing for the Reserve Bank. If we have a look at the, the data across today, we've seen another dismal manufacturing read here in Australia earlier this morning. That's the ninth consecutive contraction, that read coming in at 43.6. While uh, that, that industry is really suffering under wage and cost pressures at the moment, not to mention the high Aussie dollar, which would be helped by a rate cut tomorrow but retail sales also coming in flat uh, the market was looking for a 0.4 of a percent rise this is a concern for retailers moving into Christmas there does not appear to be a great amount of momentum in retail sales at the moment and ANZ job ads falling another 2.9 percent for the month as well um, after it fell over three percent the previous month uh, I think the one piece of information that uh, isn't pointing uh, to the rate cutters as significantly would be the TD inflation gauge which is at two and a half percent at the moment which is right in the middle of the RBA's target band of two to three percent so that figures indicating that um, it's it has come back a little bit it fell back uh, but it had been a little bit stronger than expected so that's one read that's not uh, pointing towards a rate cut as strongly but certainly there's no January RBA meeting so if they don't cut rates tomorrow they have to wait until February so that there's a risk there um, having to wait two months to be able to react but there's certainly numerous numerous industries within uh, the Australian economy that are just dying for a rate cut at the moment. Tim how supportive of equities do you think another rate cut of 25 basis points would be? I mean we hear almost ad nauseum if you like about the money in term deposits the amount of money on the sidelines and if you cut you obviously get reduced return in terms of some of those fixed uh, interests but we've seen an awful lot today and we haven't you know to date this year but not an awful impact amount of impact on equities well that's right there's there's numerous ways that uh, interest rates can sort of flow through uh, to the Australian market obviously in terms of consumer spending that flows into the retail and consumer space but certainly lower interest rates uh, will drive the Australian dollar down but the Australian dollar sort of remains stubbornly high above that at one, above the parity level it's still at a dollar four at the moment and that has quite a significant effect on the Australian market as well certainly foreign money flowing into the Australian equity market does not look attractive while the uh, Australian dollar continues to be so high it's also affecting many sort of export dependent uh, industries here within Australia being uh, uh, the competition they're facing against imports and the competitiveness of their exports to uh, overseas markets but the Reserve Bank in general uh, we have seen some easing throughout this year it certainly hasn't flowed through to areas such as construction retail spending still clearly struggling at the moment uh, but certainly it does it takes away some of the uh, some of the attractiveness of term deposits which have been falling of course as as uh, the term deposits fall investors will be looking for higher yields elsewhere and this is one of the reasons why we've seen some of those sectors such as banking and defensive uh, plays that do have attractive dividend yields and stable earnings being some of the real outperformers in the market recently and with lower interest rates it, sh it will hopefully push some more investor money back into the equity market to support it higher I wanted to get your thoughts also on one of the top corporate stories, uh, Woodside, looking to, it, well, it is increasing its gas footprint internationally, uh, buying a stake in, I think, one of the, the best names for a, an oil field or a gas field, Leviathan, just off the coast of Israel. That's right. They're looking at a 30% stake they're going to be buying in this field off Israel for a $696 million upfront payment. Now, Woodside Petroleum will be the operator of any LNG development within this uh, field, uh, of which there's something like 17 trillion cubic feet of uh, gas to be taken out of there. But Woodside Petroleum in general had a very good third quarter. We saw the Pluto LNG project. It came in better than expected, really driving up production there. And Woodside are looking to grow their LNG and gas businesses. Uh, we've also seen reports they could be looking to move into the U.S. shale gas industry. Uh, there's certainly considerable down downstream uh, investment opportunities within that space for Woodside moving forward as that industry has really boomed recently in the US. But I think in terms of this uh, investment in off 
Israel. One of the risks, of course, will be security um, over there in the Middle East. But Woodside has already commented that they're, they're uh, confident they can manage the risks uh, associated with security on a project like this. But Woodside Petroleum and, and the energy sector in general does just look like a bit of a standout buy in the market at the moment. It has been one of the underperformers this year. That sector's down 3.5% year to date, which uh, compares to an overall ASX 200 performance of a gain of over 11%. So on a valuations type ground, uh, Woodside and other, uh, other oil and gas plays in the market do look like an attractive buy. Uh, Woodside in particular, um, you'd be looking at the, the world-class assets that they do hold and there's certainly the upside potential for the oil price. Uh, it's really been stuck between the $85 and $90 range recently. Uh, certainly with improvements in sort of cyclical uh, investment and global demand growth, uh, then oil could have some considerable upside. So could see some good gains across energy and Woodside in particular.